All right, our new host is up. Um, let's go over here and check. Uh, configure physical adapters. Wait, what? Why did it put them out of order? Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. My name is Nick Howell. Today uh, we hit a problem that is a problem that I faced with ESX 3 and 3.5 way back in 2007 and 2008. And somehow here in 2023 in vSphere 7, and I'm assuming probably vSphere 8 as well, it still persists today. And that is when you add a new NIC adapter, uh, a quad, a quad port, dual port, whatever, to an existing ESX installation that has been configured, the PCI bus scan that it does on initial boot up can sometimes completely throw your numbering and naming convention out of order. Hence, I'll give you a perfect example. So if we're looking at this host here, 142, you can see zero through five, and it's got the quad on board. These are the embedded quad ports on the DL380, right? Keeps them all together. And then my dual port 10 gig Emulex, Nick, perfectly set up. It's all connected to the VDS, the, the DV switch. Uh, everything's good to go. However, because we were going to be doing some work with PFSense, I ordered three new four-port PCI NIC adapters, right? Put the first one in, booted it up, and it overtook the VM NIC number assignments that I had assigned of five and six that were assigned previously to my Emulex 10 gig adapters. And I wondered why it was throwing a fit that it couldn't connect to the data stores that are mounted over that port group that has that 10 gig VM kernel in it. So let's fix that today. Now there are two options we have here. One of them I've done before, one of them I've never tried, but have a gut feeling it might fix it. We're gonna try both and I'll let you guys know how to fix it. The first one is you have to SSH into the host and run some commands and do it manually, adapter by it, port by port, basically. So the very first thing you want to do is come to the host, make sure it's in maintenance mode and everything is off of it. You want to come to configure and you want to go down to services and you want to toggle SSH. It's probably not running on your server unless you've already turned it on. Just select it with the radio button and hit start. I've already got it turned on. So let's go log into the host. All right. So once you use putty or command line or whatever you use to get into SSH, I prefer putty myself. You want to log in as root, and we're going to run a couple of commands real quick. Uh, I always like to go to Etsy VMware. That's where most of this stuff is stored anyway. We want to do ESX config dash nix minus L to list them all. And this is basically going to give you a rundown, a full rundown of all of the stuff. Let me spread this out so we can kind of see this in a little bit cleaner layout. So what you can see here is all of my nix. And you can see the first four are onboard Broadcom NICs on my HP DL380 G8 ESX host. That's what these are, 380 G8s, Gen 8s. So it's got four onboard NICs, embedded NICs, uh, that are Broadcom, and it's using the NTG3 driver, which is perfect. Um, and it's also got a two port, dual port 10 gig Emulex adapter, uh, the HP certified one the NC552 SFP, all right? However, you saw on the previous host that, well, these weren't, these were out of the, you know, VMNIC four and five were the 10 gig ones on the other two hosts. It's still that way. I was showing you guys that a second ago. But for some reason, when I powered down the host, installed the PCI quad port adapter, booted the host back up because of the way it handles PCI device numbering, and there's kind of a, fight for who's going to get the first uh, NICs at the beginning. Somehow, some way, it decided to give two ports on that card to four and five, which were already owned by the Emulex, and then the other two ports to eight and nine. Why would it do that? This is a problem that's been around since the late 2000s. It's early days of ESX stuff, and it has to do... I'll link a KB in the bottom 
uh, in the description for you guys. This has to do with the way that on boot PCI devices are scanned and enumerated as the system is coming online. So you guys can read all about that super hardware stuff if you want to, but we're here to fix this today. So there's two ways we can go about this. One, there's a way that we can run a few commands that is not supported. I want to be clear about that that you can renumber manually the aliases that are assigned to the particular PCI devices using some, some local commands here at, logged in as root on the ESX host. The other thing I wanted to try first was actually just reinitializing the host. Very simple to do. You simply go to your console, F2, and I'm going to walk you through guys how to reset the configuration on your ESX host. And I want to see, just for morbid curiosity, if it numbers them properly on a full reset on a new install like that. Is this just an artifact of upgrading or adding additional PCI cards uh, after the install and the setup is done? Because I'm, it really disturbs me that you're moving my VM NICs, my uplinks in my DV switch that data stores go over to different aliases. Like it's always been a problem and it's something that really needs to be fixed uh, so that this doesn't happen. You can't change the alias of a VM NIC that's actively in use. Even if you're, if you're just throwing a card in there like that. Because when the server boots up, it's not gonna find its data stores. It's not gonna find the VMs that might've been in there. That just can't happen. So we've got to fix this. Plus, I'm a little bit OCD. I want all of my hosts to look the same. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do two things. I'm going to take you guys with me. I'm going to walk over there and reset the configuration on this ESX host. And I want to see if it boots up, if it assigns the VM NIC aliases in the same order as it's done here, or if it puts them in a proper order. If it does that, there's my answer. All I have to do is reinitialize a host. It takes 10 minutes. You go to your DV switch, you add the host back, you set your uplinks in your port groups, call, mount your data stores and call it a day, right? Easy peasy. So let's go give that a shot. All right, so forgive my horrible, ugly crash cart here, but you can see same IP address, 132. That's the one we were just working on. And we're on ESX 703 on a DL380 Gen 8, right? So all we're gonna do is come down here to F2 and we're gonna put in our password. Trying to do this with one hand is fun. I don't exactly have an easy password. All right, and now we're gonna get in here and you can see reset system configuration. So I am in maintenance mode right now and it, this isn't really gonna matter. We're just gonna to toggle down uh, to reset system configuration. And this is purely an experiment, guys. I have no idea what to expect, uh, but I just want to see out of curiosity if it will number the NICs properly. If so, it's a much more supported and safer way to fix this problem than trying to go in and monkey around with the command line to try and rename them the aliases yourself. Reset configuration. Yep, left 11. And restart host. And there it goes. And I'll come back once it's up and online and we can see the adapters. All right, guys, back over here at the desk. The system is back up in default settings other than I had to go in and re-IP it, put the domain DNS stuff in and all that kind of stuff. But what we're going to do right now is log into the host directly. Uh, 132, same IP address. Uh, we're going straight to the host. And there it comes. All right. Moment of truth. We're going to see if this actually works. So go to networking, physical. There it is. So you can see the top four here. Actually, let me do something. In, uh, uh, let's go to host manage services. SSH start. Right. Cool. Now we can restart our SSH session. Accept the new certificate. Root. Password. I basically want to run the exact same thing. So, uh, ESX config dash nix minus L. It worked. Holy smokes. Uh, where'd networking go? Physical nix. So we can see it right. Oh, sorry, I want to get this to where I can have both on screen for you guys. And there we go. 
The first four are my onboard Broadcoms. The next two are my 10 gig NICs back into their four and five numbering as they should be. And the next four are the new NIC. So there you go, guys. Yes, I'm going to have to re-add it back to the DV switch. Yes, I'm going to have to go back through and apply patch baselines again. But so much safer and so much more supported option for you guys to solve this problem. Just re-init the hosts. That's really what it comes down to. Yes, I'm going to have to do this two more times. But that took me, in the grand scheme of things, 10 minutes. It really wasn't a big deal versus taking a huge risk and borking the installation by using some root level commands uh, in, in, SL, in CLI. Uh, I'll take rebooting a host, re, re initting a host every day. So if you run into this, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. This has been a long standing problem, VMware. Please fix this. That's all I can say. But until next time, take care. <laughs>